Hey friends how are you all so this DXD story, so what if Naruto had forceful unhealthy relationship with Kuroka in DXD movie. Harsh breathing, panted gasps crying out in silent terror, arid pleas for salvation, dotted the seemingly silent moonlit park, the only other sound within his mind was that of a muted buzz, a quiet hum that barely registered to his ears, honestly, it might as well have been a cacophonous banshee wail, for that's all he could do at the moment, listen. Listen as the blood pounded away in his ears, a silent bump that slowly drained away, flowing from him as though it were following the rest of his blood, oh yes, that's right, he also experienced pain no he didn't feel pain, he heard it, saw it, tasted it, felt isn't quite the right word to describe the hell he currently lived, every pain breath, every broken inhale, every rushed exhale. Every slight movement of his eyes, every faint taste of his own blood, everything burned, thousands of knives took up residence within his lungs, good god it was unimaginable. A mocking voice broke the silence, he couldn't exactly register what was said, no the constant buzzing didn't exactly allow room for petty speech at the moment, if he had to guess, it was probably that incredibly sexy crow lady that was talking the lady that Hayato's girlfriend had transformed into, the bitch who stabbed the pervert, the snarky bitch who. 22 seconds. Who killed me he realized, I am dying, aren't I? The realization numbed him, a blessing, but not one had be able to truly appreciate, the physical pain was gone, if only for a moment, but now a whole new hell had been laid bare before him, he, Yuzumaki Naruto, the progeny of the late Yuzumaki Kishina and Namaki's Minato, was now dying. Help a silent plea for assistance, for a chance at recovery went unheard. 21 seconds. Yuzumaki Naruto had been a bright young lad, if a bit rebellious, born the son of Namaki's Minato and Yuzumaki Kishina, two of the biggest names in corporate Japan, Naruto had been raised with a veritable silver spoon within his mouth for all of three years, following a horrendous malfunction with Konokor, his parents' company, clean energy reactor, Naruto found himself alone. His parents having perished in a heroic bid to evacuate employees and stall the impending explosion, the fallout of the tragedy had been irreparable. With its founder's debt and the destruction of a multi-billion dollar venture, investors in Kono Corporation pulled out, ultimately bankrupting the company and forcing the board to sell it to a friendly compatriot company. The young Yuzumaki himself suffered further tragedy, being taken in by a seemingly friendly uncle and aunt, Naruto's future appeared to be in good hands, publicly at least. Following the first two years and the final movement of his parents' fortune into the hands of his uncle Jiraiya and aunt Tsunade, Naruto's life went straight to hell. Both individuals pissed away the massive fortune, spending money on hookers, booze, and gambling, while his treatment did not massively alter, a gradual change occurred. Most nights he cooked his own dinner, bathed himself, entertained himself, for the maid Shizune was attending to Tsunade's needs, and finally put himself to sleep, he alone contributed to his studies, finding a means of making it to school each and every day, without the assistance of his family, prior to his ninth birthday, the fortune dried up, and the hammer dropped. Without going into needlessly gritty details, Naruto's life became much worse, having been forced to work as a veritable servant for his aunt and uncle, Tsunade frequently beat him, Jiraiya actively ridiculed and demeaned the lad, both actively sabotaged his attempts at attaining knowledge, forcing him to stay home regularly in order to serve them. His 11th birthday had been a blessing, Jiraiya had been in a car crash, he had been declared officially brain dead the following day, Naruto found Tsunade two hours later, unconscious with an empty whiskey bottle in one hand and an overturned bottle of pills in the other, her coma lasted four years. Having been freed from the whims of his oppressors, Naruto, with the aid of the protective services agents that had been assigned to the lad, was able to establish a place of permanent residence, working diligently on his studies, had hoped to attend the illustrious Kuo Academy one day, having learned of the acceptance of male students. Oh how he wished he could take that decision back. 2019-18. The first year had been rather difficult, due to the quiet nature had developed under the care of Jiraiya and Tsunade, Naruto found himself socially inept, having an increasingly difficult time relating to his fellow students, his natural good looks didn't do him any favors amongst the male population. His inability to carry on a proper conversation and regular social faux pas scaring away the female populace. It was only when had befriended a young Issei Hayato that things had started to turn around, while isolated due to his awkwardness, a shining beacon had eventually breached the veil of his solitude, Issei Hayato had knocked him on his ass, the pervert having been running from an irate kendo club, following a quick apology and a poor attempt at hiding in a locker. Issei stood ready to receive his beating only for an unlikely ally to reveal himself. Naruto defended Issei, offering to take on his punishment, the kendo club promptly beat them both. Bruised and battered, blue eyes met brown, and a friendship formed. The latter half of Naruto and Issei's first year was a wondrous time for the blonde, having a friend allowed him to express himself and form an actual outward personality, while Issei did not receive as much as the blonde had within the relationship, he would not trade this newfound friendship for anything. 
Well anything that wasn't female. 1716. Naruto loved to say, plain and simple, finding in the brown-haired youth a brother of sorts, a fellow male who shared several passions and misfortunes, the leading of which pertained to their inability to woo the opposite sex, Issei was Naruto's brother in all but blood, a sentiment shared amongst the Hayato family which had taken to the Uzumaki. Naruto might as well have been a member of the unique household. It was only natural that Naruto followed Issei on his date. Sure, he was jealous, that went without saying, an incredibly cute girl had chosen Issei over him granted Naruto had never seen the girl before, neither had Issei damned. But the fact remained. Issei had one-upped him, still, Naruto had a bad feeling, an uneasy sensation had formed at the pit of his stomach, he didn't trust the girl, not completely, so, he decided to tail the couple on their date, both to cheer his brother on, and to make sure nothing went wrong. Oh god how everything went wrong. Would you die for me? K an incredibly sexy transformation from a cute girl into a sexy crow woman in latex s and m gear, some rambling about how the Hayato should blame God for something or another really Naruto didn't exactly feel up to remembering it all at the moment, especially considering the giant fucking hole in his chest, no, the angel, crow. Bitch let's stick with bitch for now the bitch's discourse wasn't exactly important. Not after she pulled out a fucking light spear. Nothing prepared Naruto for that moment, head ran damned if he didn't run straight in the wrong direction, he should have fled, should have left Issei there to die why the fuck hadn't he? It was as if there was something inside, some piece of genetic coding that refused to allow him to leave his friend. So here and, he flew, he tackled, he felt pain, unimaginable pain. 15, 14, 13. What did that bastard do? He stood there, looking at Naruto's very own gushing broken body. Naruto was sure that the bitch had something snarky to say she seemed the type to boast, honestly, he didn't give a damn, as long as Issei got aw. Leave it to the dumbest to get his ass killed staring at a pair of tits. Well, Naruto liked to think that Issei was staring at the bitch's breasts, a lingering sense of comedy actively denying his current situation, digression aside, Issei was stabbed, the bitch mocked them, probably, she flew off, and now the two boys were dying. Just as Naruto felt the darkness begin to creep into his vision, a flaring red luminescence revealed an angel to his bedraggled eyes, red flowing hair, piercing emerald eyes, a figure that would put Aphrodite to shame. Rhea's Gremory. 1211. Help, desperation, an unbelievable feeling of hope, perhaps relief of a beautiful final visage, whatever it was Naruto felt life returned to him for the briefest of moments. It lessened when the red head turned to Issei first, it was selfish, something he normally would have kicked himself for, but Naruto wished she would have addressed him first, if could save them, then he was felt he deserved priority, considering Hess had a giant hole in him a bit longer than his compatriot. 10. Muted words, a flash of red, that was all Naruto could glean, with a tremendous effort, the Yuzumaki shifted his head 180 degrees, eyes widening at what he found, the blood covered Issei lay there, unconscious, but sans a giant hole, a slight movement of his chest denoted that he was breathing, alive. 9. Rhea stood from a crouched position, turning in his direction, hope filled Naruto's very being, he was saved, this woman this angel had saved Issei. She could save him too. Sapphire met Emerald. Naruto's world crashed. 8. I'm sorry, her tone denoted sadness but it didn't exactly reach her eyes, she was remorseful yes, but not overly so, that much Naruto could tell, he he used up all eight of my pawn pieces, I am not at liberty to waste any of the more powerful pieces, Naruto didn't know what the fuck she was talking about, but he could read between the lines, she could save him, but won't. Rather, she called to Ford to waste whatever it was that saved to say upon him. 7. If it makes you feel any better, it'll keep him safe, as terrible as it sounds, it really didn't make Naruto feel a bit better, did he not deserve to live as well? Had he not thrown his life away just so that Issei might live? Had he not earned himself another chance, seeing as Issei wasted the one Naruto had died to give him? 6. Rias effortlessly picked up Issei, before vanishing in a flash of red, Naruto was alone, in the dark, covered in his own blood, bleeding out, silently pleading for Rias to return, to give him another chance. Somebody please save me, a mute plea heard by no one. 5. Fine. 4. Fuck them. 3. He didn't need them didn't need their help, a tremendous effort resulted in Naruto rolling over, falling face first into a drier section of grass, a trickle of blood, stemming from the pool created by Issei trickled forth, crawling toward the blonde. 2. Naruto extended his tongue, he didn't know why, but it felt right, it felt good, darkness encroached upon his vision, the edges became covered in black, the abyss began to swallow him whole, yet he soldiered on, fighting forth, refusing to accept death's embrace like a humble coward, he cold reached the blood, his arms unmoving, having succumbed already, having betrayed him. He didn't need them anyway, his tongue would do, he reached forth desperate. 1. A slight wetness met his oral organ. Uzumaki Naruto died. 
he remained so for a total 76 seconds. Once blue eyes opened once more, however, replacing the sapphire blue gaze of an innocent young man whose prime directive revolved around caring for his precious few friends, was a red baleful glare, darkness receded from his vision, limbs moved once more, blood began to flow again, however, instead of gushing forth from his body, the red viscous fluid flowed towards it. The hole within the chest of Yuzumaki Naruto filled, absorbing the veritable torrent of blood until there remained no traces of its expulsion, the hole itself disappeared, having been replaced with the very skin and tissue that had once been absent. Rising to his feet, Naruto gazed forward, his eyes seeing all but training on nothing, a grin split his face, an incredibly sharp row of razor-like teeth piercing the darkness with their resonant splendor, a slight crease split the white streak, a minor rugged exhale of breath escaping from the crevasse, slowly the teeth moved further apart, the mouth in which there is eyeing opening wider. A direct correlation could be found between the widening of the mouth and the increasing volume of the exhales the laughter. His head thrown back, his body racked with terrible tremors, his eyes trained on the moon above, Yuzumaki Naruto laughed, the excursion into darkness had been, enlightening to say the least, now now the fun could begin. When Sona arrived to clean the mess left behind by the fallen angel and Rias Gremory's most recent acquisition, she was surprised to find only slightly singed ground no blood whatsoever. She narrowed her eyes before having her peerage fix the park up, never noticing the dark red eyes glaring at her from the shadows of the trees. Rias Gremory, the scarlet beauty who laid claim to the title of heir to the famous Gremory household, was a vision of sinful loveliness, a beautiful hergless figure, a resplendent visage that could call to life even the deadest of hearts, shimmering emerald eyes that commanded respect, and long, dazzling crimson locks finer than the finest of silk. These features dominated the public view of the devil heiress, most knew her by these features alone. A vision of absolute beauty whose very presence released a veritable boon of splendor upon those lucky enough to exist within its range. Udo Kiba, the handsome blonde-haired prince of Kuo Academy, and Toju Kaneko, the academy's unofficial mascot, knew Rias a bit differently, of course her beauty was well known to the both of them, however, her place within the lives of these two was significantly greater than mere aesthetic comeliness, no, to Kaneko, and Kiba Rias was a goddess. The glamorous angel who beat back the darkness that had once threatened to consume them, she was their leader, their savior, their very reason for existing, Rias Gremory was their master their king. Imajima Akeno retained a slightly different outlook upon her king, she too, like Kaneko and Kiba, had been saved from a damned existence by the crimson-haired heiress, Rias had spared Akeno a half-life, a life in which she would be subject to constant paranoia, constant fear of her ultimate destruction, yes. The dark-haired halfling revered Rias in much the same regard as her two junior peerage members, yet Akeno retained a particularly interesting position that allowed her further insight into Rias' gremory as a person, after all, best friends tended to know more about one another than the typical comrade. Imajima Akeno knew a great deal of Rias' gremory, she knew of Rias' true feelings regarding the members of her peerage, all positive views, she was aware of Rias' guilty pleasure, all things pertaining to Japan and its various manga series, she knew her favorite foods, her propensity for puzzle games, her hatred of sleepwear. The cross look on her face when forced to disentangle her hair in the mornings, she was privy to the woman's disdain for her arranged marriage, her hatred for the proposed bridegroom, her resentment of her own family for forcing her into such a position. Akeno also knew of Rias' willingness to do whatever it took to ensure her own future. Rias, as Akeno had observed, was a fair and loving master, she took care of her servants, showing unconditional affection to those under her, and acting as a benevolent sovereign who ruled over her retainers with kindness and compassion, however, Rias was also a devil, a being devoted to self-serving ideals, that's not to say all devils were slaves to their own desires. No many were beings who actively aided others without asking for a thing in return, Rias being among the most compassionate of these individuals, still, devils were naturally self-serving creatures, beings whose very makeup demanded that they receive recompense for services rendered, beings who were selfish by nature and willing to put their own desires above the needs of others. The Keno had seen Rias save people, asking for nothing more than servitude that would be rewarded with love and acceptance, she had also seen Rias eliminate various individuals who stood in her way to achieving a stronger peerage, the Vladi vampire sect came to mind. And that boy. Rias was a Keno's best friend, her confidant, her savior, her sister and all but blood Rias was also a devil, a being who would sacrifice those who meant nothing to her personally in order to better her own condition, a Keno knew Rias as many things but there was one thing she was absolutely positive of. Rias Gremory had damned Yuzumaki Naruto. Line break. Heavy gasps rang out through the dark wood, breaking through an eerie, all-consuming, silence, even though she had been flying at maximum speed, expertly dodging the occasional tree trunk, the shrill whistle of the wind as it passed her ears did not register, blood pumped furiously throughout her body, the throbbing echo resonated within her head. Dulling all other noise beneath its massive presence. 
She was tired, muscles burned from severe overuse, begging to be given a well-deserved rest for their ungodly efforts, her dark wings, beautiful black feathered appendages, ached, threatening to fail her at any moment, even the slightest of unexpected unwanted change in her current body dynamics, would send her careening for the cold damp forest floor below, she dare not even look back. If she did she would fall, if she fell she would be a sitting duck for that that thing. A thing that had broken Donaseek, she didn't even want to think about what it had done to Kalawin or Mitlet. Rainer knew what had to be done, she had to get away, get out of this godforsaken forest lose that monster somewhere along the way, she desperately needed to get back to Grigori HQ, get there and tell Azazel about what she had seen, come clean about everything. The murder of the Hayato kid, his blonde-haired friend, Koka. Rainer's thoughts had suddenly left her, following the mass exodus of air from her lungs, the ground was just as damp and cold as she had figured it would be, the occasional root jutting into her back wasn't exactly a welcome surprise, her mind, once a maelstrom of terror and unfounded hope, was now devoid of all rational thought, instead mired in a stunned darkness. To be honest she won't mind if this was the state in which she met her end, the stunned silence, the blissful absence of thought and sound, the piercing scream of white noise was annoying, but it wasn't like it was any worse than the shrieks of her comrades, the wails of terror and pain that had dominated her thoughts for the past ten minutes. Maybe she'd be able to pass away in this numb ecstasy, anything would be better than succumbing to that thing. Yet, as the fallen angel lay on the damp ground, root sticking irritatingly into her back, gazing through glassy dark eyes at the starlit night sky above, she felt sensation returning to her, a muted throbbing pain filled her limbs once more a dull ache creeping through her every fiber, chasing away the nirvana of numbness. Rainer started as a slick wetness reached her carelessly strewn hand, she didn't exactly register the temperature of the liquid, more like she cold gauge it, it obviously wasn't cold, so perhaps it was close to her body temp. Eyes wide, Rainer slowly lifted her black gloved appendage within eyesight, shaking trembling at the red liquid she saw spread across her digits, blood it was blood her blood. Agony unlike anything she had ever felt before, pure unadulterated mind-numbing pain spread like wildfire across her back, wave after wave of anguish rolled throughout her form, each second compounding upon themselves, until the pulsating madness had converged into one massive, never-ending conflagration, yet, amidst a burning, the beautiful fallen angel felt something else, an absence. An emptiness had become pronounced upon her back, just where her wings sat. Oh God. Shaking like a scolded bitch under the baleful gaze of an angry master, Rainer turned slowly, twitching regularly under the massive torrent of agony that was her current state, struggling for breath, the sight that awaited the fallen angel only exacerbated her broken demeanor, what lay behind her was a truly horrific jarring visual. It took time for her mind to comprehend just what it was that she was seeing well, that's not entirely true, she knew exactly what it was, it was just excruciatingly hard for her to wrap her mind around the the. The black wing that lay torn asunder ten meters to her right. An uncomfortable revulsion pooled within her stomach, amidst the ravaging pain temporarily numbed by the unholy shock rainer, found herself experiencing a new sensation, one foreign to her until this very moment. Herg. The beautiful fallen angel wretched, again and again her body shook, the pain slowly returning as her stomach emptied itself, finally, after a seeming eternity, while in actuality a paltry minute and a half, the brutally lacerated beauty ceased the removal of her stomach contents, occasionally dry heaving, as her body had become accustomed to such an action. Racked with sobs and shaking under the combined might of pain, terror, and disbelief, Rainer proceeded to fall to her right side, laying there on the cold wet ground, wrapped into a position strikingly similar to one a fetus might utilize, closing her eyes, the fallen whimpered, begging for unconsciousness to take hold before. Ara, Ara, fallen Chan, Daunt, you know that laying on the ground will make your pretty clothes all dirty. Oh god no. Eyes shooting wide open, Rainer's hazy gaze focused upon the inspiration of her fears, there, standing lazily just five meters away, stood a bright blonde-haired young man, garbed in the standard male Kuo Academy uniform stained a horrifying crimson, the man's lackadaisical posture hand stuffed in pant pockets. Back arched at such an angle as to put all weight and pressure upon the tree behind him exuded an air of falsies, had Rainer met the blonde without having previously seen him tear apart her fallen kin, she may very well have classified him as a handsome lout, anyone could have made the same mistake were it not for the eyes. Baleful orbs of crimson hatred marred the seemingly innocent visage, transforming the image of a handsome somewhat lazy youth into one of unending malice, those dark slits that acted as pupils gazed forth, piercing every aspect of the fallen angel's being, all of her secrets were laid bare before these magnificent horrible eyes, there was no escape from them, he didn't blink. Didn't train them elsewhere. Why, God why couldn't she look elsewhere? 
Crushed under the weight of the malevolent crimson gaze, Raynor could do little more than tremble, Naruto sighed, seeing her, crow bitch, in such a pitiful state, really should have done more for him, he had been aroused during the chase, positively horny when he saw the look of unbridled terror in her eyes, as he ripped apart her friends in front of her. Head relished as she scrambled to get away after watching his darkness eat her comrades, so why was it that gazing over her broken, beaten, battered, and bloody form, did not evince the same reaction. Tazzing her had felt good, stalking her had left him downright giddy, ripping her wing off had felt bloody fantastic. Now that he had her, trembling on the ground before him well it wasn't as fun anymore. No fun in an enemy that can't fight back. Naruto shrugged, the dark, booming voice hadn't exactly been wrong about anything since his revival, the blonde figured it wise to trust its judgment, after all, it'd been right about ripping Fedora Douch in half goddamn, that it felt fucking awesome. Gazing down at his prey, Naruto could feel the sneer forming, this had killed him. This pathetic excuse for a fallen angel had been the cause of his death. Well, to be fair had been an ordinary human then, a being whose weakness made him subject to the whims of the supernatural. Now though? Now he was a completely different being altogether well at least in composition, his soul was the same mostly, somewhere along the way of literally dragging himself out of that place, had changed, he wasn't that weak pitiful excuse for a human being anymore, no he was so much more. He was strong. He wasn't quite sure the exact level of his newfound strength, but based on the trembling, weak form before him, he could at least gauge that he was leagues stronger than the average fallen angel. Can we get this over with already? It's getting a bit boring. Naruto smirked evilly, damned if the voice was ever wrong, taking slow calculated steps, the blood-bathed blonde casually strolled forward, he could see it. Every breath Raynor took, every palpitation of the heart, every single muscle tremor, warmth pooled within him, oh how his heart soared at the plight of his murderer, each of his steps elicited a noticeable twitch from the fallen angel. He could hear her breathing pick up her heart rate increase as he strode forth. Raynor's eyes were wide, her heart rate skyrocketed, the blood trickle flowing down her back had morphed into a veritable stream, she trembled, her vision shaky as darkness began its encroachment, got above, he was getting closer, why, why did it have to end this way? She had so much to do, she had to steal the twilight healing from that nun, she had to earn Azazel-sama's favor, she had to had to. Naruto's eyes widened at the renewed resolve within the bloodied beauty's eyes, a rekindling of passion surged forth, as Raynor was slowly able to pick herself up to her feet. I the fallen stood there, hunched over slightly, her face obscure from the blonde's view, shadowed by her long black hair, im her voice was ragged, weakened by exhaustion and stained with pain, I will not die like some lowly human. Light pierced the dark forest, the shadows retreating from the luminescent glow, an intense pink spear of light appeared within the hand of the fallen angel, poised to strike at the blonde demon before her, Raynor gazed heatedly at Naruto, resolve and acceptance present within her eyes, there was no hope for her surviving this encounter, Raynor knew that. But she would be damned if she had gone out whimpering like her compatriots, she was not Kalwerner. Naruto stared unabashedly at the broken form that dared challenge him, he was slightly affronted at the subtle dig shed intentionally hinted at the bitch, referring to the way in which he himself had died but his respect for the fallen had risen considerably. Smiling through the luminescent pink glow, Naruto couldn't help himself, excitement pooled within his eyes, the others hadn't exactly put up a fight, sure they attacked, but after the first few spears proved to be useless, they attempted to flee, when that didn't work they begged, they had snapped under the might of the blonde, this one however Raynor was different, she knew it was hopeless. Yet she was willing to go out fighting. Seems out of character to me I thought she'd be the one to offer her body. Oh, that was new, for once it was wrong, ah well, it didn't exactly matter to Naruto, he never placed too heavy an amount of stock into the trustworthiness of others well, at least not after his resurrection, digression aside, Naruto couldn't help but grinned darkly at the dying fallen angel before him. When near death dogs tended to whimper and beg such was the case with her comrades but, it appears as though this one decided to bear her fangs. Still, when it came down to it, Raynor lunged forward, pushing as much magical energy and physical strength she could muster into the stab, it was over, she knew that, but damned if shed whimper while she died, the pink spear split the air as it was powered forward, light energy met skin and flesh. The spear shattered upon contact. Raynor's eyes widened considerably, she fell to her knees, trembling and gasping for breath, her vision trembled, her body grew weak, she raised her head to meet the blonde's gaze, one final time, red eyes filled with malicious intent gazed down, filling her with fear once more, no words were said, a tendril of darkness shot forth from the ground underneath the demon. Originating from his moon-cast shadow, Raynor felt it pierce her heart, but the pain was absent, as she fell unconscious for the last time, her vision trained upon the shadowed face of her murderer, a jagged white streak pierced the obscure visage, accompanied by two crimson pools of hatred, Raynor knew no more. When it comes down to it a dog is still just a dog, when it's broken, you put it down. 
So long full and chan, hope you don't end up where I was, his mission complete, Naruto casually strolled away from the corpse of the fallen angel, not seeing the dark tendrils absorb the body, but knowing of their presence all the same. Stopping just before exiting the newly made clearing, Naruto set his gaze upon the moon once more, his crimson orbs gazing at nothing and everything, wrenching his gaze from the celestial body above, the blonde grinned darkly to himself. Why don't we check in on Rhea's chan? Looks like the voice was back on track. Line break. Rhea's gremory hummed as she went through the meticulous task of brushing her lustrous red mane, smiling at her reflection, the beautiful devil felt, for the first time in what seemed like forever, a sense of hope overcome her being, she had acquired a peerage of particular power, championed by her queen and best friend, the lightning priestess Akeno. Her peerage included the likes of Anekajin with ties to Senjutsu in Kaneko, a failed byproduct from the Holy Sword Initiative in her knight Kiba, a time untrilling vampire, who was, unfortunately, inactive, and now a perverted boy who had taken eight of her pawn pieces to reincarnate. Surely he possessed a sacred gear of particular note, Rias could not think of something that would constitute the need for eight pawn pieces otherwise, well, perhaps if the person in question was particularly powerful beforehand, is say well he wasn't exactly the textbook definition of strong, it doesn't matter, Rias just knew that Issei was special and would prove a fine addition to her servants. While not complete, her peerage would surely serve her well in all future endeavors. Especially when it came time to deal with the flaming chicken himself, Rias felt confident, given about a year of training, her peerage would dominate the overblown assholes group, they had better otherwise she well, Rias didn't like to think about the negative connotations of her potential future. No she would make damn sure that her freedom was assured, shed come too far sacrificed far too much. Including that boy, Rhea's vibrant emerald orbs grew downcast, a haunted look replacing the previous twinkling splendor, as she remembered that fateful evening, how it had all gone to rubbish. She had meticulously planned for the eventually accruement of her new pawn, Issei Hayato, the fallen angel had been an unexpected surprise, but not an unwelcome one, its presence had assured her of the value of the perverted boy and offered a means of which to approach him, she hadn't exactly expected the fallen angel to stab the boy, but it ultimately proved extremely useful. The opportunity to convince a dying man to become a devil was too good to be true, there was no way he would say no. Of course, she never expected Yuzumaki Naruto to take the initial hit. It was unfortunate that he had involved himself with the situation, had he not followed Hayato, he may very well remain alive. You could have saved him. Rhea scrunched her eyes closed in irritation, damn the voice of guilt within her. Devils were supposed to be creatures of conceit and self-service, why was it that the death of the blonde vexed her, so it wasn't her fault head jumped out to save Issei. It wasn't her fault he took a spear to the chest, it wasn't her fault he wasn't worth the peerage pieces. It wasn't her fault he died. The tense clench of guilt suddenly vanished, surprising the beautiful devil heiress, opening her glamorous green eyes, Rias could feel the veritable surge of relief wash through her form, guilt that had built up for the past 24 hours seemed to vanish. Strange she mused to herself, before shrugging her shoulders and continuing her previous action, eyes downcast, the red head resumed brushing her hair. Ara, ara Rias chan to think you'd shrug off your guilt just like that. Rhea's eyes flew wide open as she quickly turned around toward the location from which she gauged the voice originated, eyes landing on the empty desk chair behind her, the red head narrowed her eyes, turning to once again face her vanity mirror, the vision within the reflection startled her immensely. There, reflected through the mirror, sat one blonde-haired blue-eyed Yuzumaki Naruto, garbed in the same blood-stained uniform he wore as she left him to die, swiftly, Rhea's turned to face the desk chair once again, this time finding it filled by the presence of the deceased blonde. Once more, Sapphire met Emerald. Naruto smirked. Chapter End. So, for those of you who were hoping for a significantly longer chapter I'm sorry, it didn't exactly pan out that way, I like this idea and I'm gonna continue writing it, but damned if this chapter wasn't just a pain in the ass, for those let down, I apologize and I hope you find it in you to continue reading, this chapter wasn't the best in my own opinion. But I felt it necessary to kind of set the mood for the future to come, rest assured, Naruto isn't forgiving Rias for anything Hess pretty pissed still, the whole Rainer thing might have seemed odd, but I kind of wanted her to impress him, I may not be quite done with her character yet, hint hint. There was gonna be more, but I felt the cliffinger was just too damn good to pass up on well that, and I'm lazy as all hell, and I really wanted to get this godforsaken chapter off of my computer screen, it sat there for like two weeks, while well, I either procrastinated from studying or was furiously trying to study the night before my finals, thank god that's over, btw the alcohol thing fizzled out. All good here well mostly. Be warned, if this fic is going the way I think it is there might be some dark material, nothing too horrible, no major character death, yet. 
or anything well, nobody you might care about I guess, you know, I don't wanna give too much away but Razor is getting fucking eaten alive or terrified to death, I dunno which yet, no, Naruto isn't gonna join the peerage to help out, no, he isn't killing the chicken out of the kindness of his heart, no, he isn't gonna fuck Ria's probably just bear with me here, please. I've rambled so for those who have stuck with me. Anonomic, wait what? Rainer felt the chains cut deep into the flesh of her forearm, the searing heat of the metal melting away at her bruised and chaffing flesh, she hung from the ceiling of this this nightmarish dungeon, how long had she been here, steeped in the dark hold of her captor her murderer? How long had she been subject to his vile machinations? Centuries had passed, of that she was sure, it had been years since she had seen any of her comrades. On a sequel he got off easy as far as she was concerned, the bastard had been immolated as she recalled well, burned to a crisp and reformed as was standard here, the poor souls of this hell were flayed alive, buried beneath agony and terror, death was out of their reach, for their souls belonged to their jailer. Uzumaki Naruto. The things he had done to them, here, in the darkest reaches of his very soul, Donaseek had been the most recent one to break under the Uzumaki's might, last Rainer had seen of him, the oaf had obediently donned the armor given to him by the blonde demon. The girls. Rainer shuddered as she recalled the broken souls they had become, they were nothing more than the pets of their new master. Rainer shuddered as she awaited her ultimate fate, she had died but still, she begged for release, her will was strong but she knew eventually, she would one day join the ranks of her fellow fallen comrades, it won't be long before she, like Mitlet, Kalwerner, and Donaseek before her, would pledge undying loyalty to the blonde. Naruto grinned, his gaze set upon the beautiful devil whom had recently lashed out ever so violently upon his form, the chair in which he sat was gone, obliterated by the incalculable destructive might that was the devil's power of crimson destruction, there was no smoke, no debris, nothing but a handsome grinning blonde-haired vermilion-eyed youth. His position unchanged despite the unfortunate destruction of stationary furniture, amusement danced within his eyes as he silently watched, legs folded politely, left ankle on top of right knee, accented by similarly folded hands, the crimson heiress visibly shaking and shuddering at his mere presence, the disbelief and fear within her gaze a delicious turn on for the blonde. Somebody looks positively delectable this fine evening. The Yuzumaki had to bite his cheek in order to keep his amused grin from giving way to the predatory visage that lied underneath his facade, damned if he wasn't absolutely going to love this little scheme of his. The soft grin gracing his face remained ever-present, not at all faltering under the impressive show of power orchestrated by the grimmery heiress, hell, had she not indirectly been responsible for his death and or left him to die while saving his best friend. Oh, wait that's right, she left him to die. Betting derailed by festering anger are we? A sharp glint entered the blonde's eyes, the reminder of Rhea's folly causing the resentment and unbridled righteous rage to return, it would be so easy to tear her limb from limb right now well, considering the circumstances that was actually impossible at the current moment, but still, had he actually been present in the room. He would have the prime opportunity to sate his unceasing desire for vengeance, alas, his experiences during his time spent dead had left their mark, he would play the long con for now. Once again a feral grin threatened to split his face, besides, what he had planned would be much more satisfying than mere physical destruction, no, the desiccation of all that the gremory held dear would be more than enough to satiate his desire for justice. Ooh, ominous, and here I was beginning to think you were going soft on me, what with Rainer and all. Decidedly choosing to ignore his ever-present companion, whose origin still eluded him, Naruto placed his full attention upon the still-trembling heiress, idly noting the gentle rise and fall of the rather impressive bust of the beauty as she hungrily sucked in oxygen. Rias began to hyperventilate, her lungs aching due to the unexpected rapid influx of small tufts of oxygen, the respiratory organs themselves understood that the small volumes of oxygen were detrimental for efficient respiratory action, the more primal part of her brain could also understand such, however. The part housing her higher thought process was unable to comprehend anything at the current moment, no, it was far too preoccupied with the unexpected arrival of a man who should have been dead and his seeming immunity to one of the most destructive forces in creation. Damned if that smile wasn't unnerving. The moment Riaz had turned around and saw the young recently deceased man she had lashed out, an oddity when considering her normally compass disposition, however, it seems as though the mere sight of the boy she had let die elicited a panicked response, the fact that she had destroyed half of her room and most of the bathroom behind it didn't exactly register, no. What registered was the lingering presence of an individual who, by all rules of the known universe, should now be permanently extinct. H. How? How are you still here? Suddenly a head of blonde hair twirled as the red-eyed youth turned his attention to his immediate right, smile never leaving his face. Rias, following his gaze, jumped as her door swung open, a distressed maid on the other side, Lady Gremory. 
Is everything alright? Are you okay? The comely servant's concern was palpable, but the way her eyes completely missed the smiling blonde sitting on air unnerved the heiress. Rhea's emerald orbs met the ruby fires of her blonde adversary, she felt herself trapped amidst a boiling eternity of hatred and madness, a veritable maelstrom of malice was threatening to sweep her way into the darkest recesses of her psyche. Rhea's. Lady Rhea's. The red-haired devil was finally released from the hold upon her, as her brunette maid's concerned expression filled her line of sight, Lady Rhea's, are you alright? Do I need to send word out to summon your brother? Brother? Rias was snapped from her trance at the mention of the strongest Mao, someone who would dote over her incessantly, someone who would critique and analyze her every reaction, someone who might just force her to accept her fate as a possible solution to the current psychological dilemma she seemed to be experiencing. The maid had walked right through Naruto, Rias had seen his form vanish when in contact with the servant, only to reappear a moment later, mass below, why was this happening? Rias gave the servant, Kiyomi if she was not mistaken, a gentle and reassuring smile, Gomen Kiyomi-san, I saw a spider. The maid sweat dropped, well ah that is please Milady, if you see another one J just call for one of us, alright. No need to be bringing the house down and all, Kiyomi gave a pretty smile and a slight hug to the once distressed Gremory, Rias returned the hug, casting a baleful glare from the shoulder of the kind maid towards the seated grinning blonde. Erigato Kiyomi-san, a nervous smile returned to Ria's face, bashful innocence filling her pretty visage, ahaha, I'd like to get changed now for bed Kiyomi-san, so if you'd please. Pretty brown orbs registered slight surprise before closing as a nervous smile, and slight blush took over, of course, Milady. Please, excuse me. Her piece said, the maid quickly made her way out of the room, but not before taking note of the destruction caused by her charge. Ria's sama would you also like for me to send up a repair crew? Rias gave her a kind smile, perhaps tomorrow, it'll be alright for the night. Bound from the doorframe, Kiyomi stalked away, a knowing look of intellect shining in her eyes, there was a letter that need be written, one for the eyes of a certain Mao. I liked her, much smarter than the average maid, one of those types who would do well in an evil overlord castle. Naruto chuckled, and you would know, won't you? Ignoring any response from his new friend, the reddish blonde Yuzumaka's eyes met smoldering emeralds, a frown marred the pretty face, before him something the blonde actually felt intensified the beauty of the devil, it was almost too bad he had to break her. I know him pretty and all, but damn, you keep giving me looks like that, and I just might blush, Rias felt her brow twitch at the blonde's rather sophomoric attempt at aggravation, had the situation not been so bizarre and her fellow roommate not nearly so sinister in appearance, the pretty devil might have taken up the blonde's blatant challenge, of course. There were far more pressing concerns that need be addressed at the current moment. They are dead, Naruto cold and help but sweat drop at the redhead's blunt declaration. Well obviously, the Yuzumaka's eyes grew slanted, his tone comparable to one that might be used when addressing a particularly dense child, pretty sure you are partially responsible for that fact. Apprehension swelled within Rhea's stomach, a slight sense of self-revulsion worming its way through her form, before these feelings had a chance to coalesce into any form of true guilt, the devil heiress had the wherewithal to remind herself of the necessity of her actions, once again assuring herself of the moral validity of her actions, Rhea's addressed the blonde before her. If I recall, I wasn't the one who told you to confront a fallen angel, Rhea's noticed the amusement dancing and those endless pools of ruby malice fade slightly, the mirth fled from his face, it's not my fault you needlessly threw your life away. The somber expression upon Naruto's face forced another surge of pity and self-loathing to pass through the beautiful Grimory's form, Hess my only friend how, could I not try and help him? The melancholic statement very nearly brought Rias to her knees, a tidal wave of guilt brewing as it threatened to overtake her. I won't expect a greedy ass devil like you to understand just how important having a friend is to someone like me, Yao yeah, were just like those two you only care about yourself. Rhea's eyes grew wide at the latter half of the blonde's declaration, a statement of denial brimming just beneath her lips, that's not true. I value my comrades very much. They're my precious servants. The man a grin that filled the Yuzumaka's visage unnerved the heiress, a shudder threatening to pass through her form, oh ho, is that so? Precious servants. The dark twinkle within those scalding eyes had evoked the previously suppressed shudder, you deny my accusations, yet you can't seem to call them anything but your servants, he said the word with derision and accusation. That's all they are to you, aren't they? Servants who just might be able to help you get out of your oh-so-revolting fate as the bride of the phoenix, Rhea's eyes narrowed, the blonde's vocabulary and speech pattern had changed drastically since the beginning of their discourse, playful and manic, had given way to accusing and intelligent. Even your rather extensive knowledge of my impending engagement as well as my status as a devil I can only assume that you are either a being of my own imagination or merely a vengeful spirit, Rhea's tone had shifted to one much more fitting of the eventual head of a noble devil household, the slightly shocked and wary look upon the face of her adversary only further fueled her conviction, thus. 
it is entirely ineffectual to merely argue with you, such a stratagem would only allow you to derive your power over me, thus, the heiress scholarly tone gave way to one that commanded respect, I, Rhea's Gremory, order you to be gone. A rush of power filled the room, crimson and black swirling in a massive vortex of unbridled supremacy, Naruto's eyes grew wide and fearful, as his form slowly began to dissolve away, a sight that left the resident redhead in a much happier mood, however, Rhea's was not without compassion. As the blonde slowly dissolved Rhea's gently approached him, a look of pity and compassion in her eyes, as I said before, her tone was soft and reassuring, it'll be sure to take care of his say for you, with her peace said, the heiress released her hold on her power, a veritable storm of crimson and black overtaking the room. Through the maelstrom Rhea's could discern the instant dissolution of the young spirit before her, a sight that slightly wrenched at her heart. How tragic. A moment later she reigned in her control, allowing her power of destruction to wither away, a brief glance around the room left the gremory in a state of abashment, the blatant display of power and subsequent exorcism had resulted in a rather destroyed abode, oh, and a staff of thoroughly frightened servants. Oh well, Kiyomi-san and the others can clean this place up tomorrow, shrugging to herself, Rias proceeded to the spare bedroom across the hall, blatantly ignoring the frightened and stumbling house staff. Among the gathered servants stood a perplexed and rather vexed Kiyomi, looks like her letter to Serzich's would have to be postponed until tomorrow. Rias hummed to herself as she completed her pre-bed rituals, the commotion outside of her room having died down to a gentle hum, excited for the official induction of her new pawn into her little group, the gremory jumped under the covers, feeling hopeful for the first time in years. Am red, sleeping in your skivvies. Are all devils like this? Green eyes flew open as Red leapt out of bed, her form concealed under a thin veil of covers, crimson energy crackled in her right hand, her left being preoccupied with the important task of keeping the satin cloth flush against her form, an action that elicited the rising of a blonde eyebrow. Come on now, Red Chan, it's not like I didn't see you naked two minutes ago, Naruto smirked amusedly at Rias from his position at the spare bedroom simple desk. Rias buried the embarrassed blush that threatened to overtake her face, choosing instead to focus upon the unwelcome intruder's presence, you're not real, I've dealt with you already, her tone was even, controlled. Have you? Naruto's grin was downright predatory, belonging on the face of a ravenous demon stalking its next prey, rather than the recently deceased handsome youth, you know him almost tempted to pity you. Rias narrowed eyes widened slightly before once again contracting with suspicion, what are you talking about? Her breathing was easy, steady, despite the bizarre nature of the situation and the potential danger imposed upon her by her blonde adversary, Rias felt confident in her ability to defeat the apparition, Shed already made him dissolve before, he may be persistent. But no matter what all would eventually bow before the power of ruin. The screech of wood against wood pierced the room as the young man stood, while his body moved his eyes stayed their course, never once breaking the intense connection between ruby and emerald, however, something had definitely changed, of that Rias was sure, Naruto's eyes, while menacing, no longer appeared actively antagonistic, but rather sympathetic. I take that back, I do pity you he let the statement hang, allowing it to saturate the air, he noticed the red head shudder, calculating red eyes gauged her reaction, it certainly wasn't fear that gripped the young woman Naruto frowned, he was very familiar with this particular emotion. Rage. How how dare you. The swirling vortex of crimson and obsidian returned with a vengeance, a whirlwind of grain red and black energy tore through the room, steadily dissolving all but the two occupants, you pity me. Are you daft. Who are you to pity someone like me. The Gremory threw herself into a tirade, I'm alive, I have a purpose. I'm smart enough not to throw my life away like some stupid little self-righteous nobody. I have friends, I have servants. I have a family that loves me. I'm rich, I have a future. I will not marry that bastard riser. I will not throw away my own happiness for others. She was near screaming at this point, her power elevating at each advancement and decibel level, sheer loathing entered her eyes as beautiful pools of shimmering emerald, transformed into baleful oceans of poisonous green, most of all, I will not be pitied by the likes of you. The air exploded. Wooden walls grinded to dust, the mattress Rias had once inhabited was whittled away by the lashing crimson tide, the desk and chair that Naruto had occupied disappeared quickly, unable to withstand the duress the redhead's explosive power had placed upon them, the very air began to disappear, the oxygen disappearing under the torrent of crimson and black solvents, all matter. Save for the gremory herself, began to disintegrate all matter except for the blonde before her. Rias eyes grew wide, panic once more settling in the confines of her stomach, why? Why wasn't he disappearing? It had worked before. Why wasn't it working now, Rias, amidst her inner turmoil, made a grave mistake, she gazed into the red eyes of her newfound adversary, there was pity there, of that there was no doubt, but Rias suddenly felt very small. Those vermilion orbs shined with power and depth far beyond her understanding it scared her. It terrified her. Disappear, damn you. 
she pushed even more power out, desperate to rid herself of this awful apparition and those eyes. Those horrible eyes. She had to rid the world of those damned eyes. The disintegrating walls began to creak, weakened and unable to bear the weight of this storm of destruction for much longer, a slight commotion could be heard from outside the spare bedroom, Kiyomi, and the house staff had apparently sensed their mistress's distress, unfortunately for them the magical pressure released by the heiress proved detrimental to their own constitution, a number of them. Having never experienced this level of magical potency, were reduced to unconscious bodies whose presence made it more difficult for those still cognizant to approach the source of their anguish. Ria's raged on, her mild panic having evolved to the point of hysteria at the lack of Yuzumaki disintegration, why? Why won't you just disappear? Her voice was becoming shrill, the once calm aristocratic tone having long since been abandoned in the face of an impossible circumstance, Yuzumaki Naruto should have been gone by now, destroyed and sent to oblivion, she had run the calculations in her mind, the Pelgingers would have been destroyed, wrathful spirits would have been annihilated, zombies would have been gone long ago. Hell even a reincarnated devil or possible angel would have fallen in the wake of the power of destruction. So why was he still here? A slight movement from the blonde caught Rhea's eye, oh my below and got above, he was getting closer. Naruto approached her at an easy pace, gingerly measuring each step, but following through with authority, every step forward left a vacuum of air behind, an anomaly that was soon filled with swirling crimson and black power, Rhea's eyes widened in horror. He was gliding through her magic as if it were nothing but regular air. Each step he took each instance in which he changed location cut a path straight through her magic, a knife through butter, as the saying might go. No. Stay away. Disappear. Rias began to back away, shivering in terror and releasing all of her might. When her back hit a slightly destroyed wall she gasped, pushing her body against it with full force, getting as far away from the approaching Yuzumaki as possible. Yet Naruto still moved closer, gliding through the torrent of carcinogenic magic, as if it wasn't even there to begin with. Ten feet between them, Rias released more energy than she thought was possible for her. Seven feet, Naruto ignored the influx of magic altogether. Four feet, Rias could faintly feel Kiyama's presence from down the hall, she could feel it grow weaker and weaker, until finally it was reduced to a mere pulse, Kiyomi had lost consciousness, Rias was now truly alone in her house with this monster. One foot separated them, Rias had long ago shut her eyes, refusing to gaze into the visage of her ultimate doom, cowardly perhaps, but in truth very few would actually prefer to see their coming demise, she could feel a slight tingle, his breath, upon her face. With one final effort, Rias opened her eyes, defiance filling her form, a last shove of energy, emptying her magic reserves, rewarded her with the strongest torrent of crimson ruin yet, I said, disappear. The room evaporated, walls, ceiling, furniture, accoutrements, all were reduced to nothingness as Rias released power, she was unaware she had, the air caught alight, the wind howled like a banshee in her death throes, the moonlight lit the cast weak light onto the now darkened room, providing an interesting color distortion to Rias' magic. The rest of the great mansion was now subject to this massive storm of power and. No. With one simple word it all ceased, the magic disappeared, the swirling vortex of crimson hatred following in its wake, the howling ceased, a calm serenity filled the void. Rhea's eyes widened once more, her fear and shivering returning tenfold, this man no, this monster had stopped her magic, the magic she shared with the current strongest devil, with but a word. He he was unnatural. Rias felt terror grip her like never before, realization of her imminent demise once again dawning upon her beautiful form, still, that last act of defiance had empowered her somewhat, she felt stronger oh she was still utterly terrified of the blonde before her, but now she would be able to at least meet her end with some dignity, so with a final resolve. Rias glared up into the vermilion orbs for what may very well be the last time. Only to meet twin pools of sapphire, filled, not with rage like before, but unending pity and perhaps a modicum of respect, still, she was expecting a death blow any minute now. Well? Her voice cracked somewhat, but she was far beyond caring at this point, what are you waiting for? Kill me. Naruto continued to gaze down at her with pity, several moments passed before he finally responded to her, I'm not going to kill you. Emerald eyes widened in disbelief. I'm going to pity you, first for your impending fate as the trophy wife of that perverted waste of space, Phoenix Rhea's cold help but feel revulsion enter her once more, the mere thought of that piece of trash made her feel sick, y'all need to be stronger in order to change that fate, that's for sure, Rhea's directed her attention once more upon the blonde. Who seemed to be issuing his musings aloud, I suppose I could help you there but well speak on such matters in the future, Naruto turned his blued gaze upon her, of course there's the other thing I pity you for as well. Rhea's cold to resist the temptation. W what? Naruto's orbs of electric blue, morphed to once again form the vermilion pools of hatred and malice, his gaze piercing her very soul, and ensuring the existence of future nightmares, I'm here to stay. 
His insane laughter left Rias in a near catatonic state, she didn't even notice his eventual exodus from her room. The staff would find her huddled in a corner of her room the next day, shuddering. I stop here so see next video if you enjoyed also like and share with your friends.